Hey folks, I am Kevin Ioli. Welcome to Yahoo Sports, and I have with me Kayla Harrison. I don't know what to call her, the uh, the, the queen of the PFL. She uh, runs through this thing 14-0, uh, 20 for 20 in takedowns, two-time PFL champion, starting the playoffs on August 20th against uh, Martina Jindrova. Kayla, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I guess um, I, I was saying before we started recording, I should call you the star of Impractical Jokers. So obviously, uh, you got a little uh, side work in addition to uh, beating people up for a living. Well, no, I, I I just beat someone up on TV for that one. <laughs> different, different. <laughs> no cage involved, but I've done a lot of living in my 32 years, I guess. Uh, ap- apparently. Uh, when you go out like uh, and do those kind of things, you know, outside of your normal realm, do you think that that you know has an impact on your fan base? Is it build your fan base? Does it make your brand better? For sure, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, <laughs> I make this joke all the time, but I'm partially serious that any male from the age of like 12 to 60, they all comment and say, "Oh." I watched you throw Murr through a table. Like, I know you from college. Like, that's what nine out of 10 fans come up and say to me. I know you from college because it was a line from the show. So for sure, it helps my fan base and and my brand, I guess. Now, I guess one of the things that maybe doesn't help your brand, and it's got to be annoying, and I, I, you know, I think it's an elephant in the room anytime anybody talks about you. Usually when people interview you, I see interviews, they're, they're talking about fights of people outside the PFL and not inside the PFL. And, you know, that's a compliment to you, I guess, is people think you're such a a dominant fighter. But how difficult is it for you? Because you're answering questions about fighters that you're not going to fight. And you even have some of those fighters acting like you you're ducking them. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. that's a funny position to be in. How, How do you deal with it? I mean, I, to be honest with you, I spend as little time as possible thinking about it because I, I've come to the conclusion that I have to control the controllable, right? What, what, what is, what can I control in my career? I can control um, how I prepare. I can control how I perform inside the cage, but I can't control what a promotion is going to do. I can't control what another girl is going to do. I can't control what the fans are going to think or say, I can't control any of that. So, you know, I just keep my head down. I work hard and, and my goal is to, to prove to everyone I am who I say I am. We have you at Yahoo Sports as number two pound for pound. And, you know, a lot of people agree with that. But I also get a lot of people who say, well, who has she ever, ever beaten? Um, And I guess that's the one argument that, you know, you haven't fought a girl that's been, you know, considered at that kind of level. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So so do you find that, you know, that feeling of accomplishment when you won your gold medals, you know, you're beating the best judo players in the world right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you have to get it in the gym in mma because you you haven't fought the kind of competition in the pfl or anywhere yeah. that would match your skill i mean i think that there's a lot of different the problem with mma is there's all these different promotions right like there's all these different organizations there's all these banners that you can compete under and, and judo we have a uh international governing body and there's an a world ranking list and that's it. There's no, you know, oh, well, we're going to be the, you know, world international. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's one international body. So of course I would prefer that. I would love that. (laughs) I would, I would love like, there's just no choice. You have to fight me, but that's not the reality. That's not the case. This is also an entertainment, you know, and this is a business. This isn't, this isn't sport in the purest form. This is a business. So it's just something I have to deal with. And I think that I'm dealing with it my way, the best way that I can. I'm doing, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my part. And my, my hope is to fight the best while they're the best, you know? And I, that's a huge honor for you guys to put me there. I don't think I'm there yet. I tend to agree and and be sort of my own harshest critic, you know, so slow, slow and steady, you know, if, if you keep working at it, if you believe in yourself, if you surround yourself with people who believe in you, it'll come. You know, uh, 
I don't know if this is the right word to use, but I'm going to use it. And maybe you can correct me. You know, when you came out of the Olympics and, and you know, kind of stuck your toe in MMA, I think you were reticent to fight at first, right? There was a, you were going to mm -hmm. announce for the World Series of Fighting, you know, you might fight, you might not fight. So how is it, how is your perception of the sport and your love for the sport changed from those early days when, you know, they kind of were trying to drag you in to <laughs> now where you're, you know, you're kind of one of the faces of women's MMA? Oh, I mean, it's, you know, I've done a complete 180. I think it's safe to say <laughs> I was very vocal. You know, a lot of um, MMA journalists like to point out in my post fight press conference, in my post competition press conference at the Olympics, I said, you know, MMA is not for me and it's this. I was there. That. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I was very like anti MMA. Um, and I'm not a, I'm not too big of, you know, I'm a big enough person. I can admit when I'm wrong and I was wrong. You know, I think that I wasn't wrong about a, some things, but the martial art aspect of it, the um, pursuit of your personal best aspect of it, I am absolutely in love with. I'm more in love with than I was with judo. You know, I, I love what I do every day. I get to show up train with people that I really enjoy being around, um, learn new things every day. I'm a black belt and a white belt all at the same time. I get to get better. You know, I, I there's no burnout. There's no like, it, it's really, it's a beautiful thing. And I feel really blessed to get to do what I do every day. Um, the other aspect of it, the other, you know, selling a fight or promoting yourself or being a business or being a brand, you know, that part, not so much, but I'm learning to I'm learning to deal with it and learning to to come to terms with that part of the sport. But you were, you know, there was a lot of people making a lot of money out of the Olympic movement, mm -hmm. but not the athletes, right? So you guys were not, you know, kind of getting it. I mean, I think that's the other thing with with age comes the realization that everything is not as it seems, and you know, although the Olympics is a multi billion dollar industry, you know, and although I did it for the pure reasons, you know, I didn't do it to be famous. I didn't do it for money. I didn't do it, you know, to be on a Wheaties box or whatever. Um, a lot of people make a lot of money off the Olympics. <laughs> so right. I guess there's, there's good and bad in everything, right? Like there's no, I haven't found something on this earth yet that is uh, completely, except maybe my kids, but other than that, <laughs> got to take the good with the bad. So, you know, as you've gotten in, into MMA, you know, like right now, I think one of the great things about the sport is we have fighters coming into the major promotions now who started training as MMA fighters when they were mm -hmm. six or seven years old. They weren't mm -hmm. judo players or boxers or wrestlers. They were mm -hmm. MMA fighters from the beginning. And to me, that's raised the level of the sport. And it's forced athletes like you to adapt and adjust, right? Because you have to add those other elements to your game. And do you feel like you're at the point now, you know, you referenced before, you don't think you're ready for maybe pound for pound, but do you feel like you are a complete MMA fighter at this point, or do you still have a ways to go to get there? I mean, there's always room for improvement. I'm always growing. I'm always changing. I'm always adapting and learning and getting better. And um, you're absolutely right. It's a very exciting time to be an MMA fighter. I think a couple, you know, like you said, there are people who have just been training MMA from the start. And the beautiful thing now is there are also coaches like you don't have a jujitsu coach and a wrestling coach. You have an MMA coach who did right. MMA, who fought an MMA. So it's a really exciting time for the sport. And I think that I'm ready. You know, I think that I am an MMA fighter now. It's, you know, my coach, Mike, always used to joke, like, once you're five and oh, you're a veteran of the sport. And I'm like, are you crazy? You know, you know how many judo matches I had before I felt like a veteran. <laughs> um, but yeah, at a certain point, you have to to own it and accept it and say, you know what, I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. It's, it's interesting, you know, you, you referenced judo, and I was looking at your judo record, and I don't know if this was complete, but I saw at one point your record was two and two. And, um, you know, if that was the case, like, mo you know, most people would think of somebody of your ilk, a two-time gold medalist, a two-time PFL champion. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're going to run through people, right? But you had that learning period and that adjustment oh, period gosh. at the highest level too, right? And I guess we don't see those struggles in the, in the sunshine, but, you know, that, yeah. that has to buoy you as you go forward. 
that's what I, I talk about a lot. Like I had the luxury of making mistakes off camera, so to speak, you know, no one cared about judo in the United States. No one, you go to a tournament and there's 10 people in the crowd and no one cared. That was it. You know, if you won, if you lost, if you cried, if you didn't cry, um, I had the luxury of making a, a lot of mistakes in my judo career. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't initially successful. You know, I, I tell us, I do, when I do public speaking, I talk to young kids and I tell them, you know, I started judo when I was six years old. And uh, a year later, I went to my first competition and 15 seconds in, I was flat on my back. And then I went to another tournament and, you know, 30 seconds later, I was flat on my back and I went to another tournament and I lasted a whole minute and I went to another tournament, another tournament. I didn't win a judo match as a child, like the first three years. <laughs> of judo. So I was not good. <laughs> and even when I could started competing internationally, you know, it wasn't, um, I had talent. I had, I had potential, but I lost on the biggest stage in the world multiple times. You know, I've only won the world champions once, but I competed in it many times. So, um, but those were all valuable lessons for me. The failure was my fuel and learning how to deal with a loss, learning how to grow in the midst of uh, um, a struggle was big for me, big in my growth as a, as a athlete and, and as a person. When I watch your fights now, I think you have an advantage that maybe you don't think about, but like, and I, I compare Compared to Mike Tyson, where, you know, to a lot of fighters, he intimidated them. And before the mm -hmm. fight started, mentally, they were broken because I, there's no way I can beat this woman. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, it seemed like I wonder if you sense that, that, you know, there's some opponents that you have fought in the past that going in the cage, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not sure I can beat this woman. So let me just get out of here safe. Mm. There's probably an element of that to it. I don't. I don't bank on that. You know, I don't assume anyone is afraid of me or, I mean, look, they sign on the dotted line. They, they sign up to get in a cage and lock the door. So they're, they've got to be a little bit bashed crazy. Like we, we all are right. It's just, it comes with the territory. Every time I get in that cage, I think, what the hell am I doing? I am absolutely insane. Um, but I would be afraid to fight me. God, I would for sure. Yeah, with good reason. Now, <laughs> I was looking at, you know, uh, Martina stats compared to your stats and, uh, you know, the cage nomics that the PFL puts out with all the, the, you know, the punch speed and everything. So, of course, she has a little bit higher punch velocity than uh, than you do. The one thing that struck me about the stats was you were 20 for 20 in takedowns, which is remarkable. Like, you know, had nobody. I didn't know that stat until you said it in the beginning. 20 no. for 20. And she's zero for zero. So like, I look at this and I go, well, MMA, it's, you know, who gets to fight where they want to get it. How can she possibly defeat you if you're going to be able to put her on, the, on her back? Like, so, well, I, I mean, I don't think she can, if I put her on her back, I think her goal is to keep the, keep the fight standing and, and everyone has a puncher's chance. Everyone has, a you know, people love to say, I've never been hit. I've never been hit. And I'm like, well, you've never seen my sparring. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it's all, it's, it's exactly like you said, it's all about who's going to instill their will, who's going to implement their game plan to the best of their ability and win that battle. And, um, who's going to prepare properly. You know, I think that she's young in her career. I think that no matter what you do, you only have eight weeks to prepare. Right. And even though she's probably been getting better, probably been working, there's no amount of sprawls or like you, the, you can't get that much better in eight weeks. It's impossible. Right. So, um, you know, my job is to, to go out there and instill my will to be smart, to be patient, to take my time, to pick my shot, but make no mistake about it. Like the game plan doesn't change, take them down and beat them up. One of the things that I I've sensed in MMA, like, you know, what, back when uh, Ronda Rousey fought Misha Tate, uh, the second time, especially, it was like, you know, hey, Misha was tough. Misha was a really good fighter. But you saw a difference in you know, Olympic athlete to mm -hmm. a high school athlete. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. that that seemed to me. And, and so not that every Olympic medalist comes into MMA and wins a championship, but you see that level of athleticism gives them that ed edge. And you have that kind of athleticism. Right. I mean, you know, yeah. you have that pedigree, that athleticism. So do you go into your fight saying, hey, if I don't make mistakes, this should should be mine because of, of your pedigree? 
No, because I wouldn't even argue that I'm the best athlete in the PFL, you know, in the women's division. I, 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 I so who is that, then? If not you, who? I, I mean, I think that when you look at raw talent and, and athleticism, I think that Larissa has me beat there, you know, but one thing that she doesn't Larissa have is Pacheco. That, yeah, Pacheco. Yep. She, you know, she doesn't have that dog. She doesn't have that, uh, indomitable spirit. You know, I, I do believe in my mental toughness and my ability to dig deep above all that is what I believe will win me fights. Not my athleticism, not my, my gifts, but, the ability to dig deep, you know, I guess that is a gift that God gave me, you know, I have this, uh, this will, you know, and I can't be broken. But that goes back to what you said before then, because in your judo journey, as you were you know, losing these tournaments early and everything, you developed that, right? So mm -hmm. maybe it's not something God gave you, it's something that God showed you how to you know, keep pushing through, right? For you sure, know. for sure, for sure. I think that everyone has a choice, right? We all have choices we make every day with our circumstances and you can choose to um, be done, to walk away, to say no, to quit. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times in my life uh, I've wanted to quit and I've wanted to give up and I've wanted to walk away. And I mean, there not even just from sport, from life, you know, we're talking about like, right. we're beyond right. sport at this point. We're talking about, you're I didn't know on your life. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why I know nothing in the cage will ever defeat me because mm -hmm. I have been to rock bottom because I have been to the darkest places because I've been at the lowest of low. I know there is something inside of me that doesn't give up. There's a little voice. There's a little, whatever you want to call it. There's that thing. I have that thing. And I believe in that thing more than anything else. So, so maybe I, I get, maybe I lose someday. Maybe I lose, maybe I get knocked out. Maybe I get whatever ragdolled. Let's say that I'm not as great as I think I am. Do you think that that will stop me? Do you think that that will deter me? Do you think that that will, that will define me as a person. I think I would be afraid to be the next person to fight you after that. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I think would be the bad thing. Yeah, nothing like that could ever define me, you know, because I, at the end of the day, look, we get in a cage and we fight for money. Like it's not, I'm not curing cancer. I'm not, um, what I do with that platform, what I do with this opportunity is important to me, mm -hmm. but that doesn't define me. A win doesn't define me. A loss doesn't define me. Maybe to other people, but not to me and the people who matter to me. That's interesting. Two other questions and I'll let you roll. Um, I wanted to ask you about the, the bracket. So you mentioned Larissa Pacheco before. You have two wins over her. She's on the other side of the bracket. Obviously, you she'll be fighting in London on the same card uh, you're on. Break down that fight. Um, uh, how's her opponent's name? Kasonic, I think it's pronounced. Ellen, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, how do you see that fight going? Who do you think comes out of that one? Yeah, I mean, listen, Helen Helen rocked her the last time they fought. I think that Larissa has knockout power. We know this. We've seen it over and over and over again. Helen is also a big, strong, tough girl who has knockout power. Um, I think it's about who fights smart. I think it, pacing is going to be... I think the pacing of Larissa is in question. I think her conditioning is, is to be questioned. Um, but she's at an all time high in confidence, right? Like she is, she's sky high in confidence. She feels good about where she's at. So um, I expect her to win. I expect to see her in the finals. I, I think we all do. We'll see. She got to make weight, right? We got exactly. That's one, the big thing. one hurt a lot of time. The other thing I want to run past you and end on this, you know, social media is always important for fighters, right? You know, so people know who you are and they can engage with you. But you, you seem sometimes like, I, I love your social media because, you know, you, you just hit some of these people sometimes with uh, some line, one-liners and whatnot. And, and you know, you got a very underrated sense of humor. I don't know that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, you. I'm uh, glad someone gets me. <laughs> and I'm wondering kind of how, how you perceive, uh, what you want to be on social media. Like, what do, what do you see as your place there? Um, uh, and, and how do you try to use it to your advantage? 
I mean, I'm just, I'm just being me, you know, realistically, when I look at social media, it is a, um, a continuation of the real Kayla, you know, this is an opportunity for people to see me as me. I, I don't pretend I don't like when I say something to a fan or when I talk shit, that's what I would say in real life to someone's face. You know, when I met Chael Sonnen, and the first thing I said to him was, Hey, by the way, my name is Kayla, not Kyla, not Kylie, not Kaylee. Like <laughs> I, you know, that's just who I am as a person. Um, but I also want to be a light in this world. I also want to be a positive role model. I also want to let people know that they, there is hope, you know, there is, it's possible. All things are possible. And again, that's just who I am naturally. You know, I had so many people who inspired me and brought out the best in me when I didn't believe in me. So, and they never asked for anything, you know, the Pedros, I use them a lot, but the perfect example, they didn't, Big Jim is in my corner every fight. He comes down to Florida. He stays with me. He deals with my kids and my three dogs. And like, you know, he's 75 years old. He has never taken a dollar from me. And how Those are I, the real ones. The, these are the real ones. He's not a yes man. He'll, he'll shoot me straight, which is why, number one, I love him. But number two, my my gift to him is to pay it forward, right? My my How I can pay him is to do what he did for me, for someone else someday. And that's through social media and that's through uh, my foundation and that's through my children and that's through how I carry myself as a person, you know? So um, that's how I look at it. You just said it for me with a great interview. Kayla Harris, uh -huh. August 20th. And, <laughs> no, uh, always good to talk to you, Kevin. And in the UK, well, good luck to you. Appreciate you. Uh, and we will probably talk to you before the, uh, the finals yet again. Oh, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kayla. All right.